Hi, and welcome to the Bookish Stitcher podcast. My name is Jeanette. You can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, and Goodreads as Bookish Stitcher, all one word. I hope you've had a lovely week since I last recorded. We have had such a fun and memorable and just amazing weekend, and it's been just such a blessing. And so my son has been doing soccer for the last little bit, and he has one game left, but he had a game uh, this weekend on Saturday morning, and he scored his first goal ever, so that he was just smiling for days, and it was such a great game. There were some other kids that got to score their first goal, too, and it's just amazing to see how he's progressed and how he's improved throughout the couple weeks that he's been doing this, and I was so happy that he got to have a goal, and it has turned his I don't want to play soccer ever into when is the next soccer <laughs> And then after soccer on Saturday, I pretty much I went and mailed out uh, I think two more prizes that have been I need to mail out to the post office, and then we drove up to Austin because my sister, who I have not seen since I was a teenager, I I it's been forever, and she lives in a different state, and she's actually my half sister, but I I have not seen her in forever, and it was so she came down. For, to vend at an event called Renegade in Austin. So she drove all the way down to Texas and her daughter owns a soap and bath products and wonderful smelling candles and that kind of stuff store and they go to different shows and I have some of that to show you because she's so sweet and gave me some. Uh, but And they had come down from, from you know, up, not, from not Texas and from Oklahoma and they had come down for this show, and my sister messaged me and said, hey, we're going to be in the state. Would, can you come, drive up to Austin? And I said, yes, of course. And so I got to go to this renegade show, and it was amazing. Austin always has such wonderful things for people that are very artsy. And it, it was luckily indoors because it's been pouring, and I don't know if you can hear right now, but it is a lovely gray... I love rain. It is a lovely gray Sunday, and the rain is falling around the house outside and just making the grass and the trees green, which is so nice to see in San Antonio. It's a lot of not green because we normally don't have rain, but it's just gorgeous outside right now. So if you can hear the rain, I hope you are enjoying it. But the the festival was held indoors, which was very nice. I was so worried when I saw that it was raining that they were not going to be able to sell anything because they drove all the way down here to vend. But it was gorgeous, and there were so many amazing artists. It was one of those things where you could spend $5 million if you had to spend. And I, I love getting art by original artists, but not, you know, not ones that cost tons and tons of money, but like artists when they're first starting out, and so you have stuff in your house that you don't know, maybe this artist will go on to become a huge name in galleries, or maybe they will never have any other showings in the one that you saw but it's just amazing to have something created by somebody I just I really value and appreciate artists because I wish that I I could do that I am not talented and gifted in that way my sister is she had had an art show at a gallery up in Oklahoma I think the weekend before so they're very busy but there was art there was all kinds of bath products there was tea which you'll see in a little bit there was jewelry clothing bags, everything, you name it. And it was definitely just one of those amazing places. I did not feel cool enough to be in there. The, I think the vast majority were very, very chic people. I was actually looking for a necklace because I love unique, quirky necklaces, and there were none. It was, they were all very fancy metalwork with stones and definitely something like notice me pieces. And I, I did not like to be noticed <laughs> when I... You know, I don't like stuff that draws people's attention. But anyway, so that was lovely, and I get to see my sister, and I post a picture of us on Instagram. I get to give her hugs, and she started tearing up because we haven't seen each other in forever. And it's funny, though, because I have really to thank social media because I didn't feel like it had been forever. Because she's on Instagram, she's on Facebook. We keep in touch all the time, and I see what's going on in her life. So I... It felt like, you know, it'd just been a couple days since I last saw her, but giving her a hug was wonderful. My kids loved giving her hugs, and my daughter was just like, 
cuddling on her and we went to this amazing restaurant. Austin has amazing restaurants called Hop Dotties. And they had the most wonderful vegan burger. It was like cornbread and beets and black beans. And the bun was like, had sunflower seeds in it. And it had sprouts and avocados. It was amazing. And it also had meat eater stuff for people to eat that ate meat. And so I think they had lovely burgers there too. So, and it was a, quite a wait or quite a line, but it, the line went quickly, so the waiting wasn't too bad, but the, the line was huge. It was out the door. <laughs> but it was a Saturday night in Austin, and Austin in Texas is a college town, and so it's always very weird going out and seeing a whole bunch of college kids and remembering that I, too, one day acted like that. And so let's get on with the knitting. But if you're ever anywhere within driving distance of Austin, Renegade is a great festival to go to. But so for my FO this week, it's a half object. And I have, you haven't seen these in a while. I've brought out some things that you haven't seen, some new, and then some that you haven't seen in a while. But this is my, I should get out my bag for it actually. This is my um, socks that I'm making for my friend Becca. All my friends asked for socks this year for Christmas. So I'm doing them. This is Fiber Nymph Dye Works, and it's in the gnome place like home. Gnome is in like a garden gnome. And I think my friend will love these. I don't know if she'll like the sparkle, but I'll tell her she's deserving of sparkle. She needs a little sparkle. <laughs> but yeah, she said she likes blues and greens and earth tones. So the red's the only super bright color in here. But I thought it would be fun for her in her Christmas package to kind of make it a gnome theme and to put like a gnome Christmas card and just so it all kind of it intertwines together. Yeah, the space is wonderful and super smushy. And these have been relegated to car knitting because I have so many other socks that I'm working on with the sock needle experiment. These have been, and they're living in a bag by my friend Amelia, and my Matryoshka bag. And Here's the Fiber Nymph Dye Works yarn label. And so what I've been doing is these have been living in my car and I knit about a row, a row, a stripe a day on them in carpool picking up my son and stuff like that. And at soccer. But so at that rate, they'll be done by the end of the month, which is fine. And it's lovely to work. And the ball is shrinking. But that is my last of her yarn that I have that I got and all the yarn that I have from hers I got at SSK in 2014 and SSK 2016 is starting to come up and I'm feeling a little bit a lot a bit if I'm honest a lot of bit sad that I'm not going to be that I didn't make it in because when it's knitting retreats or knitting festivals sometimes you only get to see these people once a year and they're people that you consider like some of your really awesome friends and to not get to see them and not get to spend those three or four days with them it's it's heartbreaking because <laughs> then you won't get to see them and give hugs I'm gonna miss so many of my SSK friends this summer I was looking through Instagram pictures and just kind of being like, oh, those were such good times last year and the year before. But I feel so lucky that I did get to go make friends, and I hope that everybody else that got into the retreat uh, has wonderful time there too. So the next thing, something you haven't seen in a while, and this has actually been moved to a different bag because it outgrew its other bag. This is in my Bags by Awesome Granny Whimsical Hot Air Balloon because I love whimsical things. And... I have in here my hero sweater and I am knitting this out of see if I can find the skein in the bottom of this lovely huge bag which is perfect for sweaters. Spud and Chloe, I'm not the cutest label you've ever seen in your life. I just oh it's so cute but this is the color I'm knitting this out of. It's looking a lot brighter on camera it's actually more of a navy but the last time you saw this I had knit about that much on a sleeve. So I finished the first sleeve and then I am almost finished. My hair is everywhere. Probably those of you with long hair can relate to the fact that your hair is just, it's everywhere. And then, 
I am almost done, just a couple more inches on the second sleeve. It's a little, I call them progress markers because to me it marks your progress, like marking how much progress you've made instead of progress keepers because I'm not, I'm not sure like how they keep your progress, but I call them progress markers. But this is my Sucre Sucre waffle. And then I'm using my marbles, which I love. And then I started the body of the sweater as well. I'm kind of just randomly, sporadically working on different bits. But So there's a lot of this done. So I have to finish the sleeve, then do probably, I'd say I'm about a third of the way done on the body because I like my sweaters really long. Like I like them like half, to cover half of my booty. <laughs> so there's that. And this yarn is lovely to work with. And I think this will be a perfect weight sweater for Texas winters because it's a cotton wool blend and it's going to be a pullover instead of, or a jumper, whichever you'd like to call it, instead of a cardigan. So it should be enough to wear, I won't even need to wear a jacket because it doesn't get that cold here. I can just wear like a tank top underneath and my sweater over it. And this, I have been working on this steadily, even though you haven't seen it. It's kind of, I love how the thing thinning is, if you just work on it even a little bit every day, a couple rows, it does grow. It just will continually grow until it's done. So that's a wonderful thing. Then, mm. okay, so I'm having some coffee today in my Jenny the Potter mug, my only one that I absolutely love. But anyways, so any of you who speak any Russian, no, even basic Russian, know that what I said last week was completely not, well, one of the three words was wrong. And well, I can say, all I can say is, if you are having trouble speaking your mother tongue, which mine is English, probably it's not a good idea if your brain's not working that well to try and speak other languages because last week I said Nimanoga, meant to want or to need. Jeanette, 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 that's basic Russian that you like learn on your first day. And as I was saying it, all oh, the rain is so beautiful. So beautiful. As I was saying it last week, I had that like tick in my head, this is wrong, but I couldn't pull up why it was wrong, what it, my brain had just left. But Nimanoga is little. So probably if you went and said, yeah, Nimanoga, Kofia, I little coffee. It's like, instead of I'm a little teapot, you're a little coffee. But if you want to say, I want coffee, you would say, oh, I hope I'm getting this right, Yahachu coffee. If you want to say, I need, you say, Muninujna, Muninujna coffee. So I don't know how I confuse Nimanoga with Muninujna. And those of you that don't speak Russian don't even care right now, but I wanted to apologize to everyone who knows any Russian. And last week was like, what does she think she's doing? But anyway. Yeah, total and complete slip of my mind. So next thing I worked on is in my Girl So Sheepy bag. And we have a giveaway currently going in the Ravelry group for one of her cute bags with cupcakes and some minis for me. This bag is just lovely. It's the perfect size for a three color shawl. And it matches my yarn inside, which you'll see. So beautiful. And she has great prices on her bags, too. So I am doing the doodler shawl. And I just barely, I started, I did one wedge on Mother's Day. And then I had just done wedges on a couple other days, but not really that much, as you can see. So that was Sunday's wedge. And then I did a wedge, I think, on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Yeah. I did this last wedge while having coffee before while we're getting ready for the soccer game. But I think it's pretty. It's a lot brighter. Luckily, it's not showing up on camera, but it's a lot brighter in, per in person, that section right here. This is some lemonade shop yarn. This is some Sun Valley fibers. And then another color I'm so excited to use at the end that kind of pulls everything together is my Fiber Addiction M. And this is in the Not All Who Wander color, which I just love. And I love her face. She is so sweet. 
I got, I'm going to miss seeing her at the Mitten in the Mitten retreat this year. I'm getting a little bit sad about my resolution to not go to any uh, things that I have to fly to because I was trying to save money, but that turned out to be a very good idea. Yeah, just trying to not go to anything that I had to pay for a plane ticket to. And then lastly, one more thing, and I did, if you can see back there, is the cubby of some more socks and stuff, and I did work on those a little bit, like I said, my whole philosophy when I have this much on the needles to not overwhelm myself is just, it'll get done, it'll get done slower, but as long as I work on it for a little bit, it will, it will get done. There's no way it cannot get done if you're consistently adding just a couple rows. And May is just going to be an odd month. It's going to be a very un month <clears throat> for my knitting. And so in a bag from a sweet friend, she sent this along when she sent the stuff for the Russian orphanage. And I don't know, can you tell me, uh, do you have an Etsy store because it's, or a shop? Because she sent this with the Russian things, but it says on here, Three Strands Fiber Works. And I tried to look up on Etsy because so many people loved your bag that you sent. And I tried to look up to tell them, you know, so to send people there so they could go and get one for themselves, but I, I couldn't find any on Etsy. So let me know. <clears throat> Sorry. And in here, I actually have something that matches the bag. It's a very bright yellow. You can't tell. But I am knitting the canopy shawl. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I saw that the designer of this shawl was having a knit along for the different shawls that she, or the various shawls that she has designed just for the month of May. And while I often participate in other people's knit alongs, I rarely ever remember to post photos, but I'm going to try to for this one, even though I probably won't win. I, I think I won one prize from my friend Chris Halsey Yarn, the U University, when, and I didn't even know I was entering a prize. I just thought I was, you know, talking about uh, sheep breeds and stuff like that, and I won a prize, which is so sweet. But then I won another prize years and years ago, and I never received it. So uh, and I probably should have written to them to ask, but I never did because I just, I, I, I'm, I'm not good at that. But so I... I hope that I get this done and that I enter in time for prizes in the designers group. Okay, so this is the canopy shawl, and I've gotten a lot done. On May 1st, I believe, May 2nd, May 3rd, the very beginning of May, when I started just randomly casting on tons of things and I found out the designer was having it, I did the garter tab cast on, which is like less than 20 stitches, it's like cast on three, then knit a couple, so a tiny, tiny bit. But I picked it back up this week and I have been just going at it. And it's huge now. And it's not even done because I have a lot more yarn than she calls for and I want to use it all up. This is looking very pale, pale yellow. It is a bright, sunshine, cheerful yellow. I posted on Instagram if you want to see a picture of the true cheerful color. but. Here's the pattern, and I've just been working on this. And so this is how much I have left, a little tiny bit, well not tiny tiny, but a smallish bit left of the first skein. And I am knitting this out of some Neighborhood Fiber Co. that I actually got at Rhinebeck to make this shawl. It's kind of what prompted me. She was having a knit along just for the month of May. I had bought this yarn specifically for this project and I hadn't used any of my Rhinebeck yarn and I was so lucky last year I got to go to Rhinebeck with my friend Lauren Elbeth21 and it's not showing correctly but bright bright yellow and this actually makes me think of my friend Jen Stormcoast because at Rhinebeck she was wearing the brightest yellow hat and I think that kind of made me want to go and find yellow yarn because it was just so cheerful. And this is going to outgrow this bag. It kind of already has, but I really wanted to show that I'm using this adorable bag because I have loved it and all the sayings on it make me smile. 
don't worry, be happy. A happy attitude always brings laughter. Um, bless this friendship. Life is wonderful. All just kind of very affirming, happy statements. So it's going to move into another bag. And that is all of my works in progress that I did a lot on. Like I said, back there are some socks and a shawl cowl that I worked on a tiny bit this week. But yeah, I'm, I'm feeling the need to kind of start working on some of the older things like my hero sweater and getting them finished. So that'll probably be happening. And I did work some on my Ketch Harbor shawl. It's and a little bit of time out because I messed up and, I, and I'm enjoying that so much just doing like a row a day that I want it to be and it's such nice yarn that I don't want mistakes in it so I'm going back and ripping back and fixing that and at almost 400 stitches 600 360 something almost 400 stitches a row it takes a while to frog a row but then for spinning I, on Friday, made little pencil roving fluff, fluff nuggets of fiber. And this is some mystery fiber. I don't know what it is. My mother-in-law got it for me. They, my mother-in-law is a history teacher. So during the summer, she likes to go to historical sites where they do reenactments and different things like that. And somebody had fiber and it was like, nine dollars seven dollars something like that and she bought it for me and I was a little bit skeptical when I heard the story behind it cause I was like, is this going to be really rough you know but it is lovely and I'm looking forward to spinning it I post a picture on Instagram you can't see it very well here but there are stunning colors inside this seemingly brown fiber there are blues and reds and rusty browns and it's so soft oh, it's so squishy and I'm going to I just have a tiny bit tiny tiny like very beginnings of this and I'm going to try to get the rest of it spun up this week so maybe I can ply next week but just kind of keep it in my one braid of fiber per month time frame because this is the May fiber for my not actually doing it spin the bin because I never posted and then on to enabling. I did not think I would have any enabling because, you know, as I talked about last week with daughter's medical stuff, but my sister had a giant box full of goodies for me when we met. It's just so sweet. And, and I, oh, and I also forgot to say at the festival I did get some tea. Oh, no, I should have. So... This is some enabling. Girl, they had the funniest names. I got a couple different ones. But this is, I love uh, Earl Grey, but I love it like with the Earl Grey with like a vanilla or a marzipan, kind of a hint of sweetness. And this says, dare to be different, audacious Earl Grey tea, loose leaf fancy pants tea, which not normally a fancy pants person, but it smelled good. And he said, if you like, Earl Grey blended with vanilla that this would be perfect for you, for me. But this is the thing, and they have a website, because I know a lot of us are tea drinkers and love to try out new teas, but the website is actually tea-wetea.com. see if I can, there you go, look. I hope you can see that. And they had some wonderful ones. They had, it was so hard to choose, and my son was there with me. And never take my son shopping with you ever because he's like, oh, and get that, and get that, and get that. And next thing you know, you're just, you have enough tea for the rest of your life. But I stopped him. <laughs> but this, oh, it smells so good. I almost opened it up to drink some today. But look how pretty that is. All their names were so funny. They had um, Bad Romance was one that I got, and it's actually for, he said it was good for headaches, and I get migraines, so I'm excited to try, sorry, I'm excited to try that and see how well it works. And then I got, I think it was Flailing Princess, 
and it, it was the prettiest tea. It has coconut and some pink flowers, and I don't know what else in it, but I think it'll make a wonderful iced tea. So, and he was so nice. He was very nice to my son. It was prompting him, helping him decide on teas. But so my sister, so sweet, she doesn't knit, but she asked a friend who kind of knows about yarn, where should I go? And she went in there and she went into the yarn store and was like, I need yarn. <laughs> I don't knit, I need yarn. In my box, she painted it. Look how beautiful that is. Ah. Oh. She just, she's not afraid to just take colors and just put them on and it turns out amazing. If I tried to do this, it would look like my four-year-old did it. She's just so amazing. She does it on necklaces. At her show, she had these flowers. She had painted the flowers, but it looked almost like the flowers were dripping, like they were paint and it was like dripping. It was stunning and I... So wished that I lived near where I could have gone to her show and that I had money to purchase a piece because I know I, I I fully appreciate why things cost original pieces cost that much. But she got me this. Be oh, I wish you could feel this. This is Mustang Creek alpacas from Mustang, Oklahoma, and it's a sport weight, grade two. Which I probably should know what that means, and I might, but it's not entering my brain right now. Things do not stay in my brain very well. And this is alpaca. It's called the barn blend. Oh man, okay, it's not gonna. Imagine a creamy, like a milk cream colored. Not quite white, but like a, not, not milk that you would buy at the grocery store, but like milk fresh from the cow. Kind of. Yeah, there you go. She knew that. I can't believe she got all this. And then she got me Malabrigo. And this is, I think it's a mini skein? Maybe? Looks like a mini skein. It says it's a full skein. Oh, it's lace! <laughs> I have never tried lace. I know, you're probably like, Jeanette, you've never tried, I know, but I will have to now because my sister gave me this. Oh yeah, and my friend Shelly gave me some lace that I need to try. It's gorgeous. And it's, um, just the color. If you can see. It's definitely my colors, purple, green, and blue jewel tones. And then the last one, another lace. This is alpaca lace paint. And it's kind of in a denim blue jean color. Some purple and cream and gray and blue. And it has 437 yards. That would make a pretty cow. And I told my sister I'm going to have to knit her some socks. I got her sock size. And then, like I said, her daughter has a business where she does. And I did a giveaway for my sister's stuff. Oh, goodness maybe like my third or fourth podcast is one of the first ones. But she has the most amazing and it's all this stuff is all like the conceptually done and the artist and stuff is done by her daughter, who is my niece. Little robot soaps, whole bag of them for my kids. Some very dapper soap. Maybe two of those. Another bar. And then soap. I absolutely love handmade soap. I, I love it. Sweet Pea, this is really, this is my favorite. Look how cute that is, Little Bubble. And it's on Etsy. And it's The Little Bubble. Oh, maybe they've got a new shop. The Little Bubble dot store envy dot com. Let's see. Let's show that. Hope you can see that. And then tarragon and carrot and lemon and rosemary. And her soaps are so pretty. And then the piece de resistance is she, she like I said, is an artist. She paints. She does everything. Like, let's just say, like, she's amazing. But, and she works with clay. I actually want to try working with clay as a medium because I, I know I can't paint 
it saddens me because I really would love to express myself in that way, but I'm too critical of myself. I don't let myself just be free and go with it. If it, if it doesn't look the way I want it to, I get very critical. But so she made, and it has our family name on it up there, but she made me this little, isn't that so cute? Let's see if I can show you. This is the, and it has little door hinges, and it's so, so cute. Thank you, sister. My sister's name is Tanya, but yeah, so adorable. And that's going to definitely go back up there. And so that is everything for the innate language is so much because she just spoiled me. I did not expect her to do that at all. And now very quickly for group news, we have our Read Knit Cal, which is going on through the end of this month. We have our sock needle experiment, which there's a thread up now in the group. I'm so sorry that took me so long. I know just several of you are experimenting with different things and have tagged me on Instagram. I know Cajun Girl Knits is trying the nine inch circulars. And so if you have any questions for people about the socks you're using or you just would love to show pictures in the chatter thread, go ahead and put those up there and I will put up an FO thread for prizes and stuff like that because it's just gonna run. I know it's not summer yet but it's just going to run till probably the end of August. I don't know. I, I have no idea, but just, it's just, it's a very relaxed knit along because all of mine are. And then, let's see, we had, we still have the giveaway for the cuppy cake, cuppy cakes, for the cupcake bag by Girl So Sheepy that I showed last week. And I'm going to put a picture up in the thread for that. And then we had, I needed to do a drawing because I hadn't in the whole year for the scraps cow that we have going on using up our scraps all year. And the winner for that was post number 59, Love the Knit Life. So when you see this, just contact me and tell me what pattern, $7 or less, you would like. And then we had two winners for the zigzag, zigzagamon pattern by my friend BD Last G. She designed it and it's a gorgeous zigzag diamond pattern going down the foot and so I asked people to say what yarn they would knit it in and the two winners for that were number 24 Celeste and number three Pass Pussin pa, okay let's pause and think carefully Picasson Maine maybe Picasson Maine somewhere in Maine possibly Picasson I think that's one of those names that's probably a little, you know, a name that I'm completely mispronouncing. There are tons in Texas that people come down and see them and pronounce it differently than it actually, than locals pronounce it. But yeah, so that's in there. And then I wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who reached out to me this week about wanting, you're probably not seeing ads on YouTube like I said you would, because I had so many people reach out to me saying that they would like like a donate button or to do Patreon or something for the podcast, which is so very sweet. And I've always hesitated to do that because I don't want to make a single dollar on this podcast for myself. I've always felt very strongly about that when I started. Um, I just, I wanted it to, I want it to be about friendships. I don't want to, I like, I'm not out to make any money for the podcast, but it would be nice if the podcast didn't cost me a lot of money. So I will be trying to figure out how to put up a donate button, or I think Patreon is easier to figure out. And if I do Patreon, I'm only going to allow the very smallest donations because, like I said, I don't want people... I would feel really guilty or obligated or something under pressure if people gave me a bunch of money. I don't know why. I've always had this. I'm not good with, like, I would rather give then receive. I remember when I first started this podcast, I think somebody from Stitchcraft Marketing or some, something contacted me and were like, hey, would you like to review this book and give it to you or something like that. And I just, I, I was like, no, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not good at like, as probably some people that have reached out to me, I'm not good at like taking, like uh, thinking things that people offer for me. I don't know why. I just feel like I don't deserve it, which is silly. But now that's out there, and um, 
So yeah, so thank you everyone, and I will kind of keep you posted. Hopefully next week's episode, I will have that to to share with, and I don't want to talk too much about it because then it just get boring for all of those of you who don't care about that kind of thing. But thank you. And so that is everything this week except for the book. And so inspired by the art festival yesterday, I have another graphic novel. And this is by Brian Lee O'Malley, and it's called Seconds. And I think graphic novels can be really great for knitters because we are visual people, knitters, because we love to see the beauty in things. And so I think art is another thing where you can see the beauty in it. So I think, I think that's part of the reason why I love graphic novels, because I'm very visual. And this book deals with the main character, Katie, who owns a restaurant. And she's currently opening another restaurant. She's in this relationship with the cook of her restaurant, but she kind of secretly has always pined for the guy that got away. And so she finds this little notebook in her, she lives above the restaurant, in her house, room, loft. And on it, it says, write your mistake, ingest one mushroom, go to sleep, wake anew. And so what happens is, let's say you write on it, I wish my ex and I had never broken up. So in the morning, you'd still be together. And that's a hint at, you know, the man that got away. And so she's planning this new restaurant, her second restaurant, because the first one has been so successful, and the first one's name is Seconds, like the title implies. But she gets so obsessed with making things anew that you're only supposed to have one mushroom. And she starts having more. And she just, it's very, if you're philosophical about things like I am or you like to analyze stuff, it's very, I think it deals a lot with the concept of is changing things that you think a past mistake necessarily a good idea? Or did those mistakes and those challenges and those roadblocks and those happy and sad things happen for a reason and it would be better if they were left the way they were? You, do you know what I mean? Like, there might be things in your life that you would love to go back and change, but maybe you shouldn't. Maybe going back and changing those would not put you in this happy, cheery place that you feel like it would. So kind of in tradition when I have showed... I uh, have talked about graphic novels. I wanted to show some pictures from this just because I think it's important to see some of the art. And so there's Katie, and the person with the giving the mushrooms is like the tree, the house spirit. And that's her. And there's a waitress at the restaurant that has been leaving food for the house spirit and her clothes and stuff because her grandmother told her about them, and so she kind of and she has um she talks about here's the mushrooms she's just trying to get more and more and more of them because she she just wants to be able to correct any mistake she might ever make there's some of the mistakes that are even so tiny that you're just like why is she even correcting that you know and she just starts to find out that all these things that she thought she really wanted weren't actually great and I love tree imagery I I just find it to be beautiful so yeah that is seconds by Brian Lee O'Malley and I think that is everything for this week if I forgot anything please tell me or I'll try to post it at places. I, I Like I said, I'm not the best at keeping thoughts in my brain. Once I have podcasted, I like go off and I just forget stuff. So if ever you, oh, I think I'm, um, I forgot to say, I think I'm almost all caught up on Ravelry messages. I'm so sorry that it's taken me a while. I got so many wonderful messages when my daughter was having her allergic reactions and she's been okay this week still. So the medicines are definitely helping, which is what they should be doing. But I've got so many wonderful messages that it took me a while to get through all those. But I think I'm almost done. I think I might have three left, which I'm feeling pretty like I'm an adult about. <laughs> like I, I'm being a good adult. I'm doing it. 
because writing messages sometimes gets hard for me because you would not believe how long a person can spend drafting a message to another person. You would think, what's the big deal, Jeanette? Spend five minutes, write me a message. And I would tell you, I spend about 30 minutes to an hour writing you that message, making sure it's all worded nice, like correctly and that the grammar and spelling and that it makes sense and all this kind of stuff because I'm apparently crazy. All right, so now that I'm turning all red and blushing, I'm going to go. Okay, so have a wonderful week, and I hope you get to do all the things you love. Okay, bye, guys.